Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Nut the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Trum Breaker the Witcher Tales. We're still wandering around the mountaintops near Mahakam, and uh, yeah, we just, well, I would say freed some dwarves, but we uh, brought them back after we had a bit of a scuffle with them because they joined the Square Tal when they were down in the valley, and uh, their parents decided to uh, send them on a, on a on a bit of a labor sentence for 50 years. Uh, we have this, ooh, this very buxom chapel here. There we go, very buxom shrine. There we go, and we get a trophy for that. Probably our 10th shrine then, pilgrim, and we get our morale up to the max. Just want to check out our upgrades, because today I want to finally get the final mess tent upgrade. So if we go to the workshop, then the mess tent, we can upgrade that to the final level which allows our units to take up 25% less of the recruit gap. So that in turn allows us to spend a few resources on new units and I'm gonna rework the deck a bit further because now we have 22 extra unit capacity available. So there we go, I swapped Alzu Thunder out for the Skull which allows us to banish any number of units from our graveyard and damage all units on the road by the amount banished which is really good. Then we, to support that a bit, I added a lot more units to the deck in general. We added a Lyrian Blacksmith, we added an, an Aratusa Adept, another Sightman, two Arbalests, and the Wagenberg. So all of those will help us generate a bit more damage than we could before. And along with a few upgrades I'm planning in the future, we should be able to bolster that strength rather quickly. Then we have one more report in the royal tent. Neutrality means neglecting our bones, ignoring our duties. While we sit here fiddling our thumbs, our lowland brethren are dying in pogrom after pogrom. Dwarves of Mahakam seize arms and join the Squiatel down with the Dwan. So of course we understand the dwarves. We've seen what happens in the pogroms in the cities. Uh, but that of course doesn't mean that they need to repay the favor. Moving further north and there's another point of interest, actually two points of interest right here. Let's take a look. The queen noted a building with unusually lavish ornamentation, including shining bronze roof tiles and glistening rock crystal window panes. An important clan dwelled there, Gabor explained. The Brecon Riggs. Could you introduce me? Meave asked. Perhaps I can convince them to intercede with Bruver on my behalf. The clan head, Ivor, invited Meave to an exquisite feast. But when she broached the subject of the war raging just outside Mahakam's borders, the dwarf changed the subject at once. Looking around the interior, Meave quickly understood why. The walls were ordained with Nilfgaardian tapestries and rugs. Gifts from friendly Imperial envoys, no doubt. Meave prepared to leave, convinced she had wasted her time, when someone clasped her shoulder and pulled her into a darkened room. <gasps> her kidnapper turned out to be... a young dwarf, female, it seemed, dressed in her nightshirt. She introduced herself as Ivor's daughter, Eudora Breckenriggs, and openly admitted she had eavesdropped on Meave's dinner conversation. Listen. Me dad's stubborner than an old goat, but I'll convince him to help you, for a wee favour, that is. Mm-hmm. What? I want you to steal something from the clan archive. Historiae Mahakamorum, tis called. See, me dad won't let me betroth me sweetikin Zoltan. Says the Codex forbids marrying a dwarf who's left the mountains. But there's precedent. Just such a case described in that document. If I can show it to Da, he'll have to change his mind. Me felt sympathy for Eudora and wanted to help her, especially considering the favor Eudora could do her in return. But she fully realized if her attempt to break into the archive ended badly, it would result in a tremendous scandal Bruva Hoog would not soon forget. Hmm. There we have another choice. Accept Eudora's offer or refuse. Well, if we refuse, then we lose the clan support either way, so let's accept. Hmm. The pot's worth the play, I believe. Fine. I accept your offer. They then shook hands, sealing the deal. Meave had to bite her tongue to stop from crying out, for the young she-dwarf had the grip of a brawny blacksmith. Meave returned to her company and, massaging her sore hand, presented Eudora's offer. 
Gascon volunteered for the task at once. Thievery's my forte. The dwarves won't notice a single mothball out of place. Gascon snuck into the archive under the cover of darkness. Just as he was tucking Eudora's desired document into his cloak, uh -oh. he heard dwarven boots clanking down the stairs. Uh -oh. Damn it! Gascon swore. I can't let them catch me. What does that mean? Okay, battle. Interesting. So, of course, Eudora wants to marry Zoltan Shive, uh, character be well known if you uh, played any of the Witcher games. Mahakam Archives. At the campfire, Gascon had proclaimed himself a true master of stealth. He claimed he could cross the Novigrad market in full light of day wearing naught but a jester cap with bells, and not a soul would notice. Well, the time had come for the Duke of Dogs to show his bark had some bite. To escape, move Gascon light-footed to the bottom right corner of the battlefield. Move Gascon using your leader. So this is a puzzle battle. Okay, move him to the bottom right corner of the battlefield and we can move Gascon with our leader. And here is Gascon himself, the burglar. Move self to an adjacent vertical horizontal position. Every turn on turn start, gain three charges. And then the guards. When Gascon moves, moves this unit one position to the right. If he reaches the edge of the battlefield, turn around. I feel like I need to head down first. So let's move down. There we go. I'm supposing that once I get next to one of those units, it's done. This unit will be spotted if located three positions away from a Mahakam guard. Three positions. So one, two, three. So if he moves one more to the right, I'm done for. Okay. So that means we can't do anything else but to move down. There we go. Then we move to the... Oh, wait, what do I have in my hand? Wait for the Mahakam guard to take a step. Choose a Mahakam guard and force him to turn around. Because I'm wondering, if is tree actually this one over here as well? Does that work vertically? And there we go. Who's there? What a nub. That was close. Then I move to the right. And end the turn now. So they move further. I think I should probably move to the right. So he's gonna turn around, but that actually takes a, a moment as well. If I move up now, I think I should be far enough away, right? That doesn't spot me, okay. So moving to the right. They turn around. Okay. Now the question is... Does it work vertically? Because I think it doesn't. So I think if I... Because three steps away means that the next time this guy turns around, I'm actually fucked. So... Force this guy to turn... Around. And then the turn. Piece of cake. Ah. I think I might have worked myself into a bit of trouble. Because if I wait, I'm fucked. If I don't... Well, let's see. If I move one to the left... Then force... This guy to turn around. I can't force anybody to turn around now anymore, but there we go. And then behind this guy, I'm pretty much home free, right? And the turn. Just a bit more. So now I can move right. 
That guy turns around, move right. And move right. There we go. And oh. Oh, I need to hold my breath now. So that's gonna yeah. Who's there? Okay. Restart. If I misdirect this guy up here, I can then start moving upwards again. There we go. Move to the right. Uh, move to the right again. And then move one down. Actually stay behind the guard and we end our turn like that. Just a bit more. Indeed, because now we can just move to the right. Move to the right. And move to the gate. Stop. Oh! Okay, so I can't end it with that last... Yeah, I could have done it there. So just going to restart it and uh, we know what to do now. So same situation. Moving to the right. Moving to the right. Then stopping, moving that one guard over here to the other direction. And then move myself down towards the gate. And that should be it. Easy as pie. There we go, got out of the library unscathed. Luckily, Gascon managed to do the deed quietly, so the dwarves never found out who had broken in. As agreed, Neve handed Eudora the stolen document. Ha! The dwarf shouted, raising the parchment in a triumphant gesture. Da, can he do nothing to stop our making vows now? <laughs> I've got to write Zoltan right quick. Thanks. Thanks a million times over. And we get Valmir's horn. And Eudora did her part too. Soon after, the queen learned there'd been a gathering of the clans, and Ivor had indeed spoken on her behalf. She could only hope the elder Breckenrigs had swayed Bruva Hoog as well. Okay, so we get another clan to our side. I'm just gonna check out that horn. So the horn is another um, another trophy or banner. I don't, don't really know what the term was again. I think, I think it tells me if I try to add it, right? Yeah, trophies, trophies, just a trophy. Permanent resilience, whenever an ally appears, strengthen it by one and give it one armor. Ha. Huh. Interesting. That's actually not bad. So, it is probably the second best thing you could have, especially with the armor. It protects our units a bit. But I'm gonna keep the Manticore trophy for now. Who knows, we'll, uh, we might actually swap this out later on, but uh, for now we're good. Then there is this other dwarf over here. Let's have a little chat with him. Your Grace, the owner of this trading post, a dwarf by the name of Branko Dahlberg, so probably a cousin of uh, Polly Dahlberg, has invited you to browse his wares. How shall I respond? I certainly have a look. Yeah, definitely. 1,000 gold for 800 wood. Yes. Yes, we need the wood and we get gold every time we do something, so uh, that is fine. So moving further to the north, another dwarf we can talk to. You can count on us, Queenie. Ivor will be a wall at your back. Stout and strong. So just a confirmation that we have the support of the Bakken. You're no cold without a beard. What are you poking me for? Ah, scrounging for coin, no doubt. Righty then, take this pouch and kindly get off my arse. Okay, we just got ran random 250 gold. So, yeah, this Sorry. clan is ours. See? Just slightly different for those straw-covered kludges of yours. Okay, let's move on before uh, Meave starts. This looks awesome, by the way. Meave starts being really, really angry at those guys. Oh, something's blocking the road. Ah, you thunder goat! I told you to hold your horses or you'll shake the hitch loose. Oh, now you're a bleeding expert, are you? You overloaded the damn cart, that's why it's busted. A wagon lay strewn across the middle of the road. Behind it stood others, some loaded with gold, jewels and other valuables, others groaning under barrels of pickled meat. Each dwarf had his own theory about how the accident had come about and thundered it out to all and sundry, peppered with choice invectives. An odd caravan, Meave said. They don't look like merchants. Nay, they ain't, Gabor answered. Dwarves of the Ferenskler. Carrying gifts for the Drake. 
Remember Keltilus? When he took Roost here, Ferences fought him for near a century. Then the dragon got weary of fighting and they realised he weren't going nowhere, so they cut a deal. He didn't bother them. They give him what he needs. Well, well. And these offerings they send often? Every week. Excuse me, got to separate them lads, for they tear out each other's beards. Hey there! Cool your idiot heat! So we could uh, gather the same from the Gwent card of Keltulis, because the, the quote, then the dragon got weary of fighting and they realized they weren't going nowhere, so they cut a deal, they didn't bother them, and they give him what he needs as the quote that's on the card. So basically, the dragon is here to stay, and instead of him bothering the dwarves constantly, they decided to give him what he needs. Gabor managed to douse his brethren's fiery tempers, but the wagon still lay across the road, blocking all traffic. Queen, said Xavier, here's an easy repair. I have the tools, the parts. Need but your permission. Of course. Go see what can be done. Xavier did indeed make quick work of the problem. Within moments, the wagon was rolling smoothly down the road, good as new. Well, shaft me, your highness, said one of the dwarves. Your engineer's got a paint like stewed meat, but he kens his trade, that's for certain. I'll convey your words to him, or at least part of them. Uh, me and the lads will be on our way now, but, but first, take this. Bit of gold by way of thanks. Okay, so I feel like, hmm, refuse to accept pay. Or take the gold. They're gonna need it for the dragon, but I don't want to offend them by not accepting the pay as well. Let's refuse and see what happens. I appreciate the offer, but I cannot accept coin for helping a traveller in need. Common decency it is. Huh? In our times, decency ain't common at all, but as you wish. Farewell. The dwarf bowed in parting, shook the snow off his beard, then rejoined his caravan. Within a few moments, the wagons had disappeared around the bend. There we go. I feel like that might give us an advantage later on. And I feel like we just got rid of the problem really easily because we had Xavier. I'm not sure if we could actually lose him by this point already. Because, uh, of course, that's the nature The nature of the game is really branched, if I, uh, if I can believe everybody else. But, uh, yeah, I feel like... We could have lost him already. They, he had some dialogue explaining why he stayed. So I feel like he could have actually explained why he left just as easily. Milady, this forge belongs to a famous armorer by the name of Nico Skaggs. Uh, again, related to Sheldon Skaggs, I presume. Truly, never in my life have I seen finer studded leather and mail. He's willing to sell, but not for coin, for he is buried up to his neck in it. Instead, he asks for labor, new hands he can train to work at his forge. Well, the ends justify the means, select a handful of volunteers, we get another part of the, a new card, and I have no idea what that is. That looks like a new card. So uh, we'll see what that is, and two more parts. Love how the camera zooms out if you go up to this uh, walkway over here, that looks amazing. That building is really nicely designed, but moving on. So the map is really linear this time around because we're just on a winding path up the mountain, the Hag's Pit. And that doesn't seem like a friendly dragon to me. So what are we gonna do about this guy? A pillar of smoke rose above the mountains and a sooty aroma filled the air. Fire! Gabor said, then took a deep sniff. Perhaps a bolt struck some barren trees. No, Meave said curtly. I know that scent too well. All Edurn reeked of it. It's the smell of burning homes. The Lyrians quickened their gait. Soon they saw a town fully aflame, and a roaring, furious dragon above it. That's your Keltimus? Gascon asked, shielding his eyes from the sharp glare emanating from the city. You were right. Perfectly harmless. Then again, let's get his knickers in a bunch. The dwarf said, grabbing his axe from his belt. Queen, we got to make haste to the rescue. Smother your fears, Sir Dwarf, Ape proclaimed. Without waiting for Mee's reply, he dropped his lance and galloped headlong towards the burning city. And there Follow we go. Me. Slay the Viper! Ape is still with us, and I feel like this might be a point where we could potentially lose him. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, let's just continue along. No, I don't know why Keltulus is attacking. Because that should not be his uh, his forte there, but help fight the dragon. Meave called out. Have our men wet their cloaks for a modicum of fire protection. We move as soon as they're done. If we don't make haste, eight will be reduced to smoldering plate. Your grace, they are but common soldiers to fight a dragon. I know, but we must help them, or at least try. While Reynard went to pass on the order, Meave turned to Gabble. This dragon, has it any weakness? Fear not, said the somber dwarf. Except a fondness for raw meat. Meave nodded and swallowed dryly. Despite the cold, she felt sweat pour down her scalp. Okay, this is gonna be stifling her fear. Meave gave the order to terrifying, attack, and her soldiers rode into the flaming city. From up close, Keltalis looked even more terrifying. Though enormous, he moved with shocking agility, like a lizard scurrying over sand. With one swing of his paw, he snapped the necks of three dwarves, then bisected a forge with a powerful bite. After that, he turned his attention to the Lyrians. Uh-oh. More of you! He said, twisting his bloody maw into a horrifying smile. God! It speaks! Here we go. Draconic Instinct. Fury of Keltulis. Ooh, look at that card. Before Meave arrived in Mahakam, she had only ever imagined dragons. Fantasized about them based on worn engravings and troub troubadour's tales. Now, would she not only see one in the flesh, she would attempt to slay it. The very thought paralyzed her with fear. How to wound the beast with scales harder than steel, or defend against fire fiercer than that of the hottest tortoise. Eliminate Keltulis and awesome music in the background. Here we go. Is it gonna be another one of those? Uh, I think it was a shortened battle, so we need to be careful here. Uh, so we need at least one drummer. Let's get rid of Gascon. There we go, drummer. Yeah, this seems like the the hand we can go with. Behind me. Stay together. Yeah, we have a shortened battle. Meave is sadly. Yeah, we can only use a warhammer, and the Manticore is dead. Keltulis, fire breath. Every turn on turn start, spawn fire on the opposite opponent's side. After three turns on turn start, move to the opponent's side and damage all units there by one. Okay. So, I feel like we need to focus damage as quickly as possible. So, let's put the um, Grey Rider down first. Without hesitation. Then the drummer and then start laying down the, the fury. to be possible indeed yarpen did kill a dragon so it has to be possible so that is every turn on turn starts bound fire so we can't get rid of the fire anytime soon let's use the regiment drummer on the other row right moving the rider out of there right. and end the turn ah shite he's raging there watch out Every turn on turn start, force two adjacent units to duel this unit. After three turns, move to the enemy's melee row. Interesting. So that means I'm probably gonna lose both of my units here. But I can move the Grey Rider to the other side. So if I put Xavier down now. Fear not. We have that. We shall achieve our goal. Then we can use Meave to put a certain unit up hey! top. Uh, are we battling monsters, actually? I shouldn't play Egg just yet, because I can't do anything with him. Let's get another drummer out. And that is a Blitz unit, so that's going to be good. Use the Regiment Drummer to swap out... Yeah, put it over here. Again, again, again. Then Egg, sadly. God bless it. Then use Xavier on the Regiment Drummer twice. And use the Regiment Drummer to get a Sightman and a Wagenberg on the fields. And use the Regiment Drummer again with the Lyrian Harshduk. Gives a unit an extra charge on the right, if I'm not mistaken. Let's use that on. Yeah, on the uh, Drummer over here. End upwards, right? So that should be fine. The Grace, we're taking losses. 
Have the three turns moved to the enemy's melee row. So that's going to be fine if he... He's able to go to the road that Ek is on. That should be fine. So we can use Gabor and use his uh, left hook to do some damage. So let's do that. All right, that's no problem. So the left hook, 10 damage on Kaltulis claws. And the Grey Rider moves as well. And then we could technically use the Wagenberg to do something more, but uh, I'm gonna save my drummer as well. So let's end the turn. Aha! So he moves back well, over there. Diminished, but be wary. Each blow it answers still with wrath and fury. Okay, so Kaltulis regeneration. Every turn on turn start, heal this unit by 10. After three turns on turn start, move to the ranged row. I think I should use. Let's do this. Let's use the regiment drummer to get. Ooh, the medic. Okay, what that's do great. You want of me? The medic can put another drummer over there, which adds two armor to the Wagenberg. If I then use the drummer again, I have another drummer. Left, right. And Left, let's get right. the Aratusa adept and use it on the drummer, actually. Yeah, on the drummer. So we had two more drummers. Then I'm gonna use the Wagenberg to damage Keltulis. There we go. Because I'm gonna lose the armor otherwise anyway. And then we have the Arbalest. Which we can use to damage... Keltulis by 9. And end the turn. So Egg is benefiting from all the damage, obviously. Uh, he's gonna go to the ranged... Row, and that's gonna be it, probably. Let's use me Warhammer to put a uh, Reynard up top. Reynard is a blitz unit, so he'll do fine. Let's put Reynard on this side of the field. Discipline shall bring us victory. Then move the Hajduk next to the drummer. Life at me plowed. Now here I'm marching proud. Then I'm gonna have to start getting rid of some units because otherwise this is gonna be too much. But, 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 but. Give an extra charge to one of the stronger drummers, like this one, for example. So we can lose uh, Xavier in the next turn. Then I think we're gonna be as high as we can. So let's just use the Lyrian Horn. And add some more damage over there. And then the turn. He's vulnerable. We must strike now. Indeed, we must. So he moves to the back again, which means he's gonna start breathing fire, but he doesn't regenerate now, which is also really, really good. So the stray slinger on Keltulis, which I'm wondering if he actually gonna, if he's actually gonna move or not. And then on my own units as well, just to make a bit more space, I'm gonna go for my lower units. There we go. It doesn't move Kaltulis, so he's probably unmoved by anything. Uh, then we attack him with the Wagenberg again, since we got an extra charge there. And then we're gonna end the turn. Then, let's use the Regiment Drummer. I'm hoping for a Forager. Yes, thank you. So the Forager on this side and let him consume uh maybe even Reynard. yeah let One him consume is another man's right patch for Reynard and xavier which gives us a bit more space over there and then we can use the drummer uh, again to get our other forager here oh, yes. and get him over there and then we can use the Forager to get rid of the Medic and the Grey Rider. Just to make some space, we have plenty of room to work around with now. So let's move the Manticore Trophy to the other side, making space for the Wagenberg with you as much Light Infantry all, units as we won't. can use. And then the Fire will yeah, get rid of a bit more damage over there. 
So the sad thing is that he couldn't move over here. Now, let's use the Regiment Drummer again. We get a Sightman and a card we're going to have to sadly remove because we don't have any space. And that gives me an idea, actually. If I just use Meave Warhammer now and put... Hmm, I have a lot of things I can put up front. Put the Sightman up front. Then use the drummer over here. I actually have two sidemen I just immediately discard. Which means that with the skull, I can actually discard all of my units here. There we go. And do 9 damage on 8 damage on Keltulis over there. Now I need to end the turn. And that gets us another unit over there. More units in the graveyard. And he's getting into regeneration mode again. So I have a bit of space. But I need an Arbalest. I have another Arbalest in my deck. But how much space do I actually have? I have, yeah. I have the Lydian Blacksmith. Which will allow me to replay the skull. Uh, and the skull... Can remove those two from play and do two damage. Should have replayed the Lyrian Horn Day. And then we have the Regiment Drummer. And we get... Yeah, sadly we get the War Wagon. Uh, not what I wanted, so let's pause. And defeat. Yeah, we need to kill the dragon. We do. So there we go. He's almost down because of our extra arbalests. But now he's in regeneration modus. But I set up a forager to. So we're gonna counter this immediately with the forager, and that should be it because the damage is six each time, which should kill Keltulus outright. There we go. Okay, only needed uh, four cards this time, but uh, perfectly harmless. That day, many Lyrians perished, either to the dragon's all-consuming fire or to its flesh-rending claws. Yet their sacrifice was not in vain. Together with the dwarves, they were able to grievously wound Keltulis, forcing him to flee. The howls of the wounded monster rang throughout the valley. So it's not dead. That's right. Howl, you scurvy snake. Shouldn't he have attacked us, eh? Damn fuel lizard. But why did he attack? Eve, that's Vavrenik, elder of the town and all the Ferences. My regards and condolences. Eh, tain't so bad. If nay for ye, wouldn't there be a stone left unrubbled? To be honest, when I caught wind some human queen come to Mahakam looking for aid, I said, a crocus would sprout twixt my cheeks afore I'd vote aye on that. Gonna be a fear to look in my breeches after, but... Changed my mind. After what I saw today, what ye did for us, you've the support and undying gratitude of all Ferences. There we go. Thank Look at you. that. Faced with a Nilfgaardian peril, that means a great deal. Uh, forgive me for interrupting this tear-tugging scene of interracial reconciliation, but I can't hold back no longer. Favrenik! Double chase. What happened? Why'd Keltless attack? I can as much as ye. Meaning, squat diddly. Just flew up, started spewing flames. Half the tune lit up in a flash. Sheep shank. Three hundred years I've been a good neighbor. What's done's done. Got to think about the future. The Drake's just taking a breather. Got to finish him off for his regained form. Meaning, we haven't no much time. He heals like an alchemist's pup. And the nearest guards are miles away. He'll be up flying again before they get here. Aye, that's what I thought. Ahem. <clears throat> Perhaps your grace, you'd... Uh... What? Jest you must. I ken you're tired through the fight, didn't want to risk casualties, etc. But remember, the beast sleeping on a bed of gold and rubies. All belonging by right to brother, of course. But if a uh, quibbling sum wandered off, he'd no notice. Hmm. That does alter the equation or oh no, fighting a dragon once was enough. I do want to see what happened. 
with Cal Tullus because I feel like we get the chance to then confront him and check out what why he even attacked the dwarves. I admit that does alter my calculations. Besides, the dragon was badly wounded. Putting it feathery, blood poured out of him like a leaky bladder. Just needs a coup de gras. And I feel like I would have lost egg otherwise as well. Fine. I'll do the deed. Can you see the light? Oh, Vavranek, Vavranek. This lady's gonna make your rump a regular crocus garden. <laughs> Aye, Queen's doing us a great service. One that'll profit us both. Yep, a shitty dwarf. So, where is Keltalus's lair? North of here. It's a vast cavern. You can't miss it. Meave bid farewell to Vavranek and set out on her way. Did her way lead to the dragon's lair, you ask? Shh. Let's not spoil the surprise. <laughs> okay. Nice. So uh, we get control again, so that's good. I'm actually going to take a little break because this episode has been going on long enough. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And when we get back, we're going to head towards uh, Dragon again. Uh, by our own volition this time. So thanks again enormously for watching. And hope to see you guys next time in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.